I took my formal education at Nate. You can see a couple of degrees and diplomas on the wall there. Um, believe it or not, in finance um, through that stream, and it was a fantastic experience. Um, Nate has been immense when it comes to myself in personal development as well as educational development. I would highly recommend if you are thinking about going to Nate, um, definitely do. Um, it's something that you will never regret. And my company, Reputed Marketing, uh, we've been in business for around five years now. I've got about 12 years ago. Experience. Um, and yeah, so without further ado, uh, let's go through with a little bit of a disclaimer here. So it's okay to make mistakes and more importantly, you need to put in the time. Um, that's a huge important factor that I like to throw into these presentations just to make sure we all understand that, you know, there's all these tools and things that we can do in 2021, but just making sure that you take an honest effort to look into them, to utilize them and make them effective for yourself and your business. And then, yeah, put in the time to learn what you need to learn um, to become great at something. So who's ready? Um, let's get to it. Uh, we're going to be doing a, a things a little bit differently here, and I want a little bit of engagement from you guys. So I'm going to have a little bit of an incentive. So there's going to be a few logos that do not have names associated with them. And if you guys can guess that company, the ones I specifically state, um, we've got a $20 gift card to Starbucks. There's going to be three opportunities to win them. Okay, so good luck, have fun, and let's go. So you've got the skills, but do you have a plan? Um, that's the biggest thing that we're going to talk about here is when it comes to the skills associated with yourself, you can have all kinds of skills, but do you actually have a plan in place in order to make those skills work for you? Uh, the best thing that Simon Sinek said, I'm going to see if I can just kind of put this down just for a sec, if you guys can still see it. Um, oh, sorry about that. Let me just present it once more. There we go. So Simon Sinek put it perfectly. Um, you can be the best gardener in the world um, and you can plant orange trees in Ottawa. But will you actually get oranges from Ottawa? So is it the right climate? Is it the right place for you to actually be able to grow fruit there? Or should you maybe move to Cuba or California where you could actually make oranges grow? Um, that's what we're going to be looking at here today is um, whether you actually have a plan in place in order to make sure that your business can grow as well as the tools in place to make sure that you can make your business grow. So where to start? Um, there's a whole bunch of resources out there. You're on the internet. You're looking for information about um, the business that you're in, competitors, a little bit of analysis. So we're going to go over a few different resources for you to start a little bit of your research yourself. So firstly, Nate has an immense library um, of tools, including the business market re research collection, as well as the business source complete. These are resources that Nate students have um, in order to do some market research themselves. And I've actually gone and included some links inside the slides. So what I'll do, Cecile, is I'll send this over to you once we're done to make sure that um, it's easily um, gettable, I guess. And then we also have um, Statistics Canada here. And the great thing about Statistics Canada is this year, they're actually doing a census. So every five years, 2011, 2016, and now 2021, they're going to be completing a census in May. Um, and that is huge. The more data that we have as marketers, the more we can understand about the environment that we're trying to market in. So that goes to everything from demographics to business information, all kinds of different industry um, information is going to be packed into that census. So I'm super excited to see what they come up with for 2021. Um, and yeah, it's going to be relevant, fresh data. And then the government of Alberta and the city of Edmonton um, actually have open data portals, a little bit more hyper local information about Alberta and the city of Edmonton, as well as the various cities um, around the province, they do have open data portals. But you can find all kinds of information throughout these portals to help you with your marketing research to really understand the climate that you're looking to market in. And then from there, um, we also have a couple of other alternatives. So we have um, Statista. So that is an actual status um, statistical database of all kinds of information from all over the world. Um, it is paid for and free as well. Um, and the free information that they have on there is actually really relevant um, to businesses in general. So that is an excellent resource that we have here. And then we also have Google Trends. Google Trends is also a fantastic free resource for everything related to trends um, on the internet. So if you're looking for any sort of topics or any keywords or any details, 
Google Trends is the best way to get that information. And uh, apart from that, we also do have quite a few industry partners here, even at Nate. Um, I've got the BDC, Business Development Canada. They're a fantastic resource of information, as well as Business Link and Futurepreneur. Um, these guys can definitely help you get started in your business and can take care of some of these uh, nitty gritty details with you. Um, so definitely check out these three different pieces um, or these three different businesses or associations um, to get some more details about how you can actually market your business and do a little bit more in-depth research. And further to that, um, with all that information in place, you're looking to start a business, but you don't necessarily have a voice. Um, and what I mean by a voice is your business has to um, vocalize itself on various different channels. So making sure you understand the tonality of your voice. Do you want to be more playful? Do you want to be more serious? Um, there's different sorts of ways and methods to voice your message when it comes to marketing in general. So if you don't know what this is, feel free to look at some of the details um, in some of the websites that I've described prior, and they can definitely go through um, how to define your voice. So with defining your voice, uh, marketing itself is very simple, straightforward. Having the right message to the right channel at the right times to the right audience. That's what we're looking to do here is to build the right messaging channels, times and audience for you to make sure that your business is successful. And with the tools described prior, you can definitely take all that information and help build some more information with this, um, with the right messages, channels, times and audience. And the biggest thing to remember in marketing is that marketing is a contest for people's attention. Your attention is very limited in the marketing world. And Facebook has algorithms, YouTube has algorithms, Google, all of these companies have algorithms to make sure that they are effectively taking and capturing your attention because you only have 24 hours in a day. And the most that any of these companies can gather from that and advertise to you, the better off they are. So just remember, marketing is just a contest for people's attention, whether that's a billboard or online. Now let's dig into some of the must haves. Um, this is the, the meat and potatoes of this. I'm gonna call it a digital dump. So um, if anyone does have any questions, feel free to pop it into the chat while we're going over these slides and I'll do my best to address them there. And then we'll also have time for questions at the end. So number one, um, if you do not have a website as a business, um, you should. Um, there's various different content management systems and tools to build websites that are out there that we'll be going through shortly. But I really wanted to touch on a speedy, user-friendly website with a mobile focus. Um, over our entire portfolio of clients, about 73% of the traffic that comes to the websites is mobile whether that's a tablet or a mobile phone itself, you need to make sure that your website is mobile friendly or responsive. But why Garrett, why should it be, you know, speedy and, you know, it, it, user friendly? Why are these things important? Well, Google search, and Google search actually is gonna be having an algorithm update, um, which means that they're gonna be changing the way things are found on the internet through their search engine come May, 2021. Um, I can talk for another three hours about this specific topic, but the key points that you're going to want to take into consideration when developing or designing a website will be the largest con these terms, um, which effectively means you want the website to be fast and you also don't want the website to shift around. So you want the user experience to be fantastic and the website to also be very, very quick. Now let's get into some of the ways you can build a website. So on the top left, we've got something that's very well known. If anybody wants to hop into the chat, that's the first thing we're going to test here today is that logo. What logo is on the top left there of the screen? Holy smokes. Okay. Yeah. Who was first? It looks like Aileen. I'll have to go back into it. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Henry. Henry was number one. Fantastic. WordPress. Absolutely. Um, it is the largest, most well-known content management system on the internet. Um, very dynamic, very fantastic tool to build upon. On the right hand side there, um, you've got Google My Business and you can actually design and develop a website through Google My Business. Um, once again, a fantastic tool to use. 
And then on the bottom there, we actually have a program called Webflow. Um, it's a very new product, but I wanted to discuss it here because it is very robust and very easy to design and create a website with. Um, so definitely take a look into Webflow as well. And you may notice on here that I did not take into consideration Wix or Squarespace. Um, and there's a specific reason for that. For the previous information that I said about making sure that your website is fast and um, user friendly, using a, a WYSIWYG or what you see is what you get type editor is very JavaScript heavy, which means that it doesn't load as quickly or as good as let's say a WordPress website. Um, so come May 2021, if you're looking to design or develop a website, I would highly recommend using WordPress as opposed to a WYSIWYG editor. Now we're gonna hop into Google's digital ecosystem. Um, this is something that you will need to familiarize yourself with as a marketer um, or as a business owner or anyone in general, um, just having knowledge of this specific ecosystem will pay off dividends in the future. So the first thing we're gonna look at is Google My Business. We touched on that a little bit prior, but for those unfamiliar with Google My Business, it is a free listing on Google search that looks kind of like this. Um, so we got the Northern Alberta Institute of Technology, or NAIT, that are well known. Um, and this is their Google My Business account. And as you can see here, it's got a lot of particular details um, about NAIT. So it has their address, their hours of operation, their phone number. I'm sure you're all familiar with this specific area, but just so you're aware, if you're looking to set it up, it's under Google My Business. And once you're done setting up your Google My Business account, Make sure you're acquiring reviews. This is huge. Um, we're gonna talk on a few different topics on um, review solicitation, and email marketing techniques a little bit later, but make sure you're actually acquiring reviews as a business. Um, it is a huge search signal um, for Google to say, hey, these guys are reputable, they're fantastic, um, acquire reviews. Now, don't purchase reviews, don't do anything that goes against their terms of service, but just make sure if anyone has a great client story for you as a business, um, just acquire some reviews. It really goes a long way. Okay, now back into the Google ecosystem. Um, we have Google Analytics, Google Ads, and Google Search Console. To just summarize each individual um, item there, Google Analytics is effectively a tracking tool for your back end of your website. You can see where traffic is coming from, um, whether that's a country or whether that's from a source or a medium, like let's say Facebook or Twitter. Um, you can see all of those metrics um, through there. And once again, I can spend another hour just on Google Analytics, but definitely a must have resource for marketers. Um, Google Ads, definitely take advantage of Google Ads. Uh, for those that are unfamiliar, it's the ads that you see on the top of the search engine pages whenever you're Googling something. Um, they appear there and it's a cost per click auction based system that all marketers should definitely take advantage of. And then the maybe the less familiar is Google Search Console. Um, Google Search Console is a fantastic tool. It allows you to see where you're currently ranking, how many people have searched for certain queries to come to your website, and kind of takes the whole um, guesswork out of search engine optimization itself. And once again, I could talk another hour about Search Console, but um, it's another fantastic tool that you will need to familiarize yourself with. And then something that's actually relatively new uh, to Canada, believe it or not, is Google Local Service Ads. I made this its own slide um, just to kind of showcase the different services that Google is effectively looking to um, serve on their pages. So if you're looking to set up a business in any of these different categories here on the side, um, definitely just do a real quick search for Google local service ads and see if they're actually available um, at this point in time. Majority of these are available in Canada right now, but just double check. Um, it's a fantastic system. And effectively what it does is it's a cost per lead system. So what happens is, is Google advertises you on their search engine pages, and then um, it goes through the services that you wanna provide. And then what they do is they actually allow that person to call you and then get your services. And that lead is then considered um, a cost effectively. So instead of paying for every single click that happens on your website and potentially not converting, you are now actually paying for leads through their local service ad system. It's a fantastic tool. All of the clients within our portfolio that are using it are absolutely over the moon because it actually records the call and you can re-listen to the call. And it has a whole CRM or customer relationship management system built into the back end of it. So definitely take a look into Google local service ads if you're looking to start a business in any of these industries. 
Now let's dig into some social media tools. Um, I'm gonna kind of test you guys on one of these for sure. I'll have to pick which one, but uh, there's definitely a few in here I hope that you guys haven't seen before. Name checker. So you've got a business name and you've gone ahead and decided, okay, this is the business name that we're gonna have. And you've got a domain name that you've purchased. Fantastic. But unfortunately, it looks like that that name is actually taken on all other social platforms and those profiles actually don't do you any good because you don't have that name. Name, che uh, name checker takes the guesswork out of that. All that you have to do is type in the business profile name that you would like to have and it does a full search on all of the different social tools to see what's available. And better yet, all you have to do is click on it and it automatically registers that name for you. It's a fantastic tool that you can utilize um, to see whether or not that social username is taken um, or if it's available. It's a fantastic tool. We use it all the time. Now let's move on to publishing. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen the Buffer and Hootsuites of the world. Um, they are fantastic tools and they are at no charge. For the most part, you can pay for them, but it's a freemium model. But for most small businesses, it does work right out of the box. Um, and then the bottom there is actually Creator Studio, which is through Facebook's um, backend system. So what that allows you to do is to actually publish and create posts to Facebook and Instagram all through their backend. And it costs you absolutely nothing to do. So these are the three tools that we utilize more or less at the company. And they are an, uh, an unbelievable piece of software for what they are. Um, it's fantastic. And then we have image editors. Um, some of you may be familiar here on the left-hand side with Canva. It's a very, very robust tool that you can use to create graphics very quickly and on brand um, through their system. And it is free as well, but I believe they do have a freemium model too where you can pay a little bit more. But I wanna go on the right-hand side here. And if anyone can guess what this right-hand logo is, um, I'll definitely, holy smokes. Wow, that was close. I'll give it to Aileen. Um, Adobe Creative Cloud is exactly what it's called. Adobe is close, but we'll go Creative Cloud. Yeah, it's the suite of um, software that Adobe has. Back in the day, you actually had to purchase Photoshop or purchase Illustrator or purchase these items, but now they have a fantastic cloud-based platform where you can access some of or all of their entire suite. And as a Nate student, you actually get um, a discount on the service itself. Um, so check that out. So just make sure you have your Nate email, type it in there, and you can get the discounts up if you want to get a little bit creative um, with your content. And then let's hop into movie editors. Um, so we do have Creative Cloud here, once again, on the right-hand side, which does include things like Premiere Pro or Spark. Um, definitely very simple to use, robust um, uh, video editing softwares. And then you have iMovie here on the left-hand side, which comes free with all Mac computers. So if you're using a MacBook Pro or a Mac in general, you'll have access to iMovie. And then the center there is a paid um, application. It's called Final Cut Pro. Um, I think it's about three to 400 bucks if I remember correctly, um, but a very, very good video editor as well. But once again, if you do have iMovie and you're creating very simple um, items, you can just use that and not go into the Final Cut Pro. But I thought I'd include it just if you guys would like a little bit more information about it. Now for writers, um, writing itself is a very difficult thing. Um, and I myself am not a writer, so I definitely lean on other individuals to write content for us. But I asked them, you know, what are the two specific tools that you guys use on a day-to-day -day basis in order to make sure that what you're writing is, you know, um, simple to understand, to digest, and, you know, takes uh, the, gram the grammatical errors out of the equation. So um, the free one there, they're both technically free, but Grammarly does have a freemium model as well. But Hemingway Editor is a fantastic tool um, and it is completely free. I believe the address for that is HemingwayApp.com and it does the exact same thing as Grammarly, but a little bit more detailed. Um, so if you're looking for any sort of information on these two systems, feel free to give them a Google. And if you wanna do a little bit better in your writing, you can go ahead and utilize them. Now, this is a different topic, um, influencer marketing. Uh, I know it's not touched on a lot, but I thought I'd touch on a couple of research tools that are available online currently right now. And what these tools effectively do is allow you to look at a social media account, whether that's a YouTube account, whether that's Instagram, et cetera, et cetera, where people are technically influencers. 
Um, and there's all kinds of metrics you can look into to engagement rates, to follower statuses, and all kinds of different details. So whenever you're working or collaborating with an influencer or looking at the potential of collaborating with an influencer, you need to make sure that they have good metrics that match what you're looking to accomplish. Um, so Social Blade and Ninja Outreach are two fantastic tools um, that we utilize here to make sure that we understand the influencers who are reaching out to us, um, their demographics, their target audiences, et cetera, et cetera, to make sure they're a good fit with our clients. So before you collaborate with any influencer, I highly recommend doing research behind them and utilizing these two specific tools to do so. Um, Social Blade is once again a freemium model, so you can get the free version of it, and it does have a ton of information within. And Ninja Outreach, once again, it is a freemium model. You can get a ton of information on the free side. So um, just check them out, use them, and uh, you'll definitely thank me later. It's fantastic. Email marketing. Um, so there's two different types of email marketing platforms that we utilize over here. The first is MailChimp um, on the left-hand side, the little winking monkey there. Um, a fantastic, very robust system. Um, MailChimp has been at the top of the email marketing ladder for a very long time um, and their tools are incredible. Um, so definitely take a look into that. And people say email marketing is dead. I don't believe that at all. Um, tons of engagement still comes from email and open rates are still higher up. Um, so I feel like if you're discounting email marketing, don't include it in the marketing mix for sure. Um, and then Sender. Sender is an up and comer. Um, they do have some of the tools that MailChimp does have as well. It is free too, um, up to a certain amount of subscribers. I believe it's 2,500 and MailChimp is 2,000. Definitely an alternative to MailChimp um, and a fantastic tool once again. And then we got some uh, CRM systems or customer relationship management systems. Um, the two big ones that are free um, also have a freemium model. Um, are HubSpot and Zoho. Um, they're the big players in the game and HubSpot's integrations are incredible with all the different types of services out there, including Gmail, Outlook, um, and all the big players, Zapier, we'll touch on those a little bit later. Um, but their customer relationship management tool is free and fantastic. Zoho, once again, free and incredible. Um, they both have their strengths and weaknesses and we use HubSpot over here. But once again, check them both out and make sure you do have a customer relationship management system to make sure that you are actively uh, cultivating the relationships with your customers. And then uh, we're going to go into the automation side here. Um, and perfect, yeah, free Grammarly account that's excellent, Cecile. Um, so the automation side of things, um, we do have two different um, tools that we utilize. So we got Zap on the left which is incredible. And then we have one on the right there. And I'm going to lean on you guys here once again um, to go through what that is. What is that logo? If this, then that, Sheila, perfect. That's exactly what it is. If this, then that is another fantastic tool um, that can be used to automate certain processes. So I'll give you an example as to what these tools can do. So let's say you have a website with a contact form and someone fills out that contact form. Zapier, or if this, then that, can integrate with HubSpot and make a customer out of that contact form, and then send an email to that customer replying to them, stating that we'll get back to you as soon as possible. That all can be done in a workflow within these tools that saves you a ton of time with your marketing and advertising practices. Um, so I would highly recommend if you haven't looked into automation tools, specifically Zapier, or if this, then that, then I would highly, highly recommend you do so. And then we're going to dig into the search engine optimization um, area. You know, uh, a lot of people ask me, you know, Garrett, why don't I just stuff keywords into my web pages and, you know, I'll rank higher. Um, unfortunately, that's not how search engine optimization works um, today. That's 20 years ago. Um, not 20 years ago, but yeah, about a decade ago. So. Um, today, it's a little bit different. Um, you're looking at being an authoritative figure um, who's an expertise and trustworthy on Google, and they call that EAT. Um, so it's a very, very simple way of thinking about how to rank on Google is you need to be the expert inside the industry. You need to have authority and you need to have a trustworthiness for your specific product or service and website in general. So these are some of the tools that we use um, over at the company. Um, SEM Rush there on the far left hand side, that is a fantastic tool for doing any sort of keyword research or any sort of um, any sort of process in search engine optimization. 
Um, they do have, I believe, a free um, freemium model, um, but I believe the free side of it is very, very limited. Um, so it is more of the paid features that you'd probably want. Um, Ahrefs, once again, is the direct competitor to uh, SEM Rush. We do use both because they do have their pros and cons. But Ahrefs is a fantastic tool for checking to see how authoritative you are, um, all of your rankings and doing some website audits and a bunch of other stuff that has to do with search engine optimization. And then to the right of that, it's kind of a funny name. It's called Screaming Frog. Um, it's a very, very well-known tool inside the search engine optimization world, but it's a, a freemium tool to use once again. And what it does is it actually scrapes any website to find all of the information regarding title tags, meta descriptions, um, any sort of errors that may be happening on a website, all kinds of details that pertain to SEO in general, you can do through Screaming Frog. It's an excellent tool that's not talked about enough, and I'd highly recommend looking into that. And then we also have um, Google Search Console on the far right there. And that is, once again, another tool that we use almost every day that goes through what Google is actually seeing um, and the search engine uh, analytics that go into what Google sees about your website effectively. Once again, another fantastic tool. And Search Console is obviously free um, as well once implemented on your website. Another thing I want to stress about marketing in general, you must sure that you're local. Um, there has been a huge push um, recently with COVID and how the industry has been in Canada. And I wanna make sure that we are still shopping local, supporting local, and making sure that we are um, contributing what we can to local businesses. Um, if you are starting a business here in Edmonton or Alberta or in Canada in general, just make sure that um, your messaging does include a local feel and tonality to it. Um, so just make sure once again, that you are pushing that as a company. And I guess I'll finish off here pretty quick. Um, I left a lot of time for questions, which is fantastic. Um, so don't push people to where you want to be. Meet them where they are. And that's Megan Key, and she is the Vice President of Marketing at HubSpot. So with all that being said, I know it was a huge dump and it was a ton of information. I left a lot of room for questions here at the end. Does anybody have any questions? Don't be afraid to, to um, show your face and, and unmute to ask a question. Or if you are too shy, you can use the chat feature. It definitely is a lot. It's um, drinking through a fire hose, as we like to say. You know, it's, um, I would love to touch on more individually. Uh, but the tools themselves are very robust and they have tons of features. So um, if you would like to touch more on any other um, tool, uh, please let me know. Is Adobe Creative Cloud free? Well, as Cecile mentioned there, if you are a Nate student, um, or sorry, as I mentioned, it is discounted. Um, I don't know if Creative Cloud is a free resource at Nate. Is it Cecile? Um, I don't know about that. Uh... I only know about Grammarly that you get full access, with just logging in with your Nate email. Okay, they do have some free um, tools because Adobe Creative Cloud, yes, exactly. Um, Adobe XD, I believe is free um, that you can use as well as Adobe Spark and a few of the other web-based platforms, you can use um, the free version of it and it's fantastic. But things like Premiere Pro, Photoshop, Illustrator, et cetera, um, those are definitely not free. And we do have, what is your favorite social media platform and why? Um, you know, great question. I don't necessarily have a favorite. The one I spend the most of my time on that I didn't touch on is actually Reddit. Um, Reddit is a fantastic social platform where millions of people can collaborate and discuss topics around the world. Um, and uh, the amount of resources available on Reddit is incredible. Um, I find if I'm in Facebook or Instagram or any of those, I just continue to scroll and find information that the algorithm pushes at me, where with Reddit itself, you know, I can go through the forum um, leisurely and find topics that I would actually like to, to find. So Reddit for me, for sure. Um, are we able? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll share this over with Cecile, the whole slide and presentation, um, and all the links are embedded within as well in the logos themselves. 
So you guys just have to click on it and it goes directly to the website. Um, so absolutely, I'll send this over so she can disseminate it to everyone here. Um, yeah, so exactly. Is that for the full suite, Dale? Yeah, it looks like it. I just got it up here. It's a 60% discount for students and teachers, so. Incredible. Yeah, and the amount of value you get is just substantial at that price. A uh, little more than, let's say, 300 bucks a year. It's well, well worth it. Absolutely. Um, are there any additional tools you suggest for B2B? Great question. Um, LinkedIn itself has some fantastic tools built within for B2B. Um, and there are some other different types of tools you can use. Um, but when it comes to um, specific marketing tools for B2B, are you looking for anything specific? Maybe dig into that a little bit deeper. Consulting services mostly. Um, I would say LinkedIn's probably your best bet for B2B um, without any sort of you know manual outreach. Um, but uh, even email marketing would be fantastic to push as well. But um, look into LinkedIn, look at the marketing tools that they have in place and some of the uh, market research you can do within. Um, it's a fantastic resource. What's your view on Fiverr and freelance sites? You know, there's a lot of talent in the world. And I feel like these individuals um, go on these platforms to make sure that their specialties are shown. Now, whether that's $5 or $5,000, um, I feel like there is value in Fiverr and Upwork and other um, platforms where you can effectively hire freelancers to work with you. Personally, myself, um, I like to hire local as much as possible. We have everyone in Canada. Um, so we try our best to make sure that everything is Canadian, um, Canadian made. So I feel like um, if you're on a budget and you'd like to get some work done, definitely take a look at Fiverr and Upwork, um, as well as um, platforms like 99designs, um, et cetera, et cetera, to help you get some work done because they can save you a lot of time as well. Um, should you build an email list? Yes, you should build an email list. Absolutely. Um, just to make uh, just to make it clear, there are some laws in place, uh, the Canadian anti-spam legislation. Make sure that you are adhering to everything that is within that legislation. So if you, let's say, purchase a list of emails of Canadian-based businesses and you send out an outreach campaign to all of those businesses, um, you effectively have a bunch of liability and you need to make sure you don't do that. So make sure that there are qualified individuals who are being pulled into your database before you market to them. If my business was an app, would I need a website or Google My Business account? I don't think so, but I'm not sure. I believe you should. Um, take a look at any app that you have on your phone that is very popular and just see if they have a website. And I would venture guess that uh, 80 to 90% of them will have a website because an app page on, let's say the App Store or Google Play Store, you only have so much information on there. Um, and to really showcase what your product or can do or your app can do, you'll need some more information. So I think having a website can help um, post more information about your app, um, like let's say a frequently asked question page or a knowledge base or something like that. Um, I believe, yes, you, you should have a website in conjunction with an application. Um, yeah, and a Google My Business account, um, once you get large enough, yes. Um, and I feel like having a Google My Business account is a no brainer for any business, whether that's an app or whether that's just a, uh, a landscaping company, right? Everyone should have a Google My Business account. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I'm just going to unmute myself here rather than typing everything out. Um, but just to follow up on that, um, like the reason why I didn't think so is because when I go to download an app and I don't know, like maybe I have heard something about it, but I don't know exactly what it is. I personally, I just download the app and figure it out that way. Maybe they have some sort of about page within the app rather than redirecting myself to a website. So I'm just wondering why would, why would uh, a website be more effective, I guess. Sure, absolutely. So when you do a search for a specific app, do you search on the app store first or would you Google 
it on a, on the search engines? Where do you think you would search to find an app that's related to what you're looking for? Would you typically use the app store or would you go to Google? I think it would depend on, um, like if I'm looking for an app to do me a service, then yes, I would use Google. I agree. But if I heard like from a friend, oh, this app is like, maybe it's a sleep tracking app or something. This app works really well. That way it'd be a different story. Right. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And I agree. Um, so I guess it depends on the industry that you're in, the market who you're looking to um, target, um, as well as a different, a bunch of different factors, but just to make sure that you are able to post as much information about your app um, online, I would at some given time have a website. Okay, for sure. Thanks. No worries. Thank you. Any other questions? So you in, that, in your first slide, you had uh, WordPress, Google, my business, and uh, I, there was one more, I forgot what it was called. What was the third one called? Webflow. Yeah, it's a very neat tool, very new. Um, it's a freemium model. Once again, you can build your entire website for free through the Webflow app, and then you can um, effectively put it live once it's completed. Very, very good tool. There's another question in the chat. What is your opinion on sharing content and blog on your website just for the sake of having content? Um, you should never post anything just for the sake of having it. There should be a reason behind why you're posting that content, um, whether that's answering a question or discussing a process or a milestone inside your business. There's all kinds of things that you can discuss, um, not just for the sake of having content, but what I would recommend is utilizing some of the search engine tools that I previously had in the other slide um, to kind of see what people are searching for. So you can build content around that. Um, if you, people are looking for answers on Google, you must supply the answers. And the more answers that you can um, expertly answer, right? The more questions you can expertly answer, um, the more authoritative you'll look in the search engine world and the higher you'll rank for those specific questions, which will then hopefully acquire you business. So I feel like just posting and sharing content for the sake of having content um, it's not a good idea. You should have a plan and a process in place in order to make sure that you're doing something that is going to be viable um, to your business. You're welcome. Well, going once, <laughs> going twice. Seems like we have no more questions. Um, so we're going to close off today. If you do want a copy of the slides, please email me um, and then I will get them to you. Um, or if you have any other questions that we can follow up on for you, just a reminder that next Tuesday for our students, we have the Innovation Challenge Information Session and we are awarding $2,000 in cash prizes in this year's Innovation Challenge. And on the 9th, we're hosting our Movers and Shakers virtual networking event, which is an amazing opportunity for you to meet with Edmonton business leaders and grow your network. Uh, career success is directly related to the size and quality of your network. So don't underestimate um, the power of networking. Also, um, I have money to spend I have money to spend sending our Nate students to events, virtual events, seminars, and workshops. So if you would like to know, I might have some ideas of the kind of things we can send you to, please do email me and I will be happy to support your growth.
Um, thank you so much, Garrett, for joining us today. We would be nothing without the help of people like yourself who, who mean everything to us and our students. Everybody have a great day, and I'll be sending you a short survey as a follow-up. Thank you all so much. And for the people who answered the questions, right, sorry about that, um, feel free to send me an email or just send me some information regarding how I can get the gift cards over to you, because there was the three of you. So um, my email. I've got the names. I've got you the names. It? Oh, perfect, Cecile. Thank you. Yeah, I took them down. So so they, they won't be forgotten. <laughs> okay. Sure. Have a great day, everybody.